So I thought this would be kind of a good way because, you know, when you talk about Islam in any country, um, it really isn't there until it has cultural manifestations and institutions uh, within that country. And, uh, and so these are some of the ways in which there are beginning to be very American Muslim cultural manifestations. And in a lot of ways, um, you might say that uh, American Islam has had an influence um, and currently has an influence in the world that is, is somewhat greater than its numbers, and that has a little bit to do with the state of America in the world. Um, and a few of the intellectuals, uh, American Muslim intellectuals, that can, we're going to look at um, towards, uh, towards the end of this. Now, um, American Islam is, according to uh, Pew, it is the fastest growing uh, religion in the United States of America. That's currently about 1%, um, which would be 3.3 million or so. There are other numbers, and we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, but it is considered to be the fastest growing. Now, some people think that that's due to conversion, but it's really not. Um, conversion rates into Islam are about 20% of, uh, of uh, Americans convert, and about 20% of Muslims are converts, and about 20% of Muslims leave Islam. So it's really actually staying the same. There's nothing different about the American Muslim community, which is an important thing to break down because a lot of times due to the attitudes that people have towards Islam, when people convert, people sometimes make a bigger deal out of it. And, and then, oh, people are converting to Catholicism. You know, you're not going to hear big news stories about this or anything. Um, so, but it's really pretty much the same as other religious communities, and it really exists. They say that about 20% of Americans at some point in their life change their religion. Um, and, uh, and so it's really just about the same when it comes to, uh, to Islam. Um, and so most of this growth is due to birth rates, that Muslim Americans have a higher birth rate uh, than other religious communities in the United States of America. All right. Although Islam is a growing religion in the United States of America, it is also the religion towards which there is the, um, the least favorable perception. Now, this is from 2011. Um, from the statistics I have heard, but I haven't found any reliable graphs on it, from the statistics I have heard, it is actually now more around here. Just a little bit over 30% of people have a favorable view of Islam in the United States of America. Now, one of the things which people outside of, uh, of Islam aren't, tend not to be as aware of is that there is actually a very large, active, well-funded um, anti-Islam propaganda industry. They, get about, they have about $220 million has been put into giving negative images of Islam. Um, there is, for example, on the internet, a place called the, I think it's the uh, American Center for Peace and, uh, and Coexistence or something is what they call themselves. Um, and they're in uh, the Boston area, and they are an offshoot of the group that very actively advocated against the construction of the Islamic, of the, um, Islamic Center in Roxbury, Massachusetts. They didn't win that. They spent over $30 million in legal fees to try to fight the construction of the mosque. They still lost out in court. The Muslims spent about $2.5 million uh, to, to fight the case. Um, but then the, uh, one of the people who set up that industry, went, that organization, went so far as to set up a fake Islamic name as a detractor against the imam of the mosque at the time to try to paint him negatively from both an Islamic side and from a, uh, a non-Islamic side. Um, and so there are, and that by the, his name was Suhaib Webb. We're going to get into him at the end of this uh, talk. But there is a lot, there are a lot of efforts um, to, uh, to do this anti-Islamic uh, propaganda in various ways. And uh, there is not a single Muslim intellectual in the United States regarding whom you will not find negative stories on the internet. It is part of the territory, it is part of the process of trying to prevent um, the spread of Islam and really to prevent Islam from having a place within the public sphere. All right, now this shows 
this is a map showing the uh, largest religion, um, the largest uh, second non-Christian group by region in the United States of America. Um, pink, I don't know why, is Judaism. Um, green is Islam, which makes more sense. Um, and the, the yellow is the, uh, Buddhism. And red is Hinduism. Um, and, and, oh, and we have, as Robert mentioned the other day, the Baha'is. Our turquoise, our, what would we call that? Chartreuse, I guess, are the Baha'is. Um, so, uh, so this gives you an idea. So there are 20 states in the United States of America in which Islam is the second most um, prevalent religion. Um, and my guess is that that's going to change in places like California, because there are very large communities in Southern California. Um, and that in, uh, in, for example, Maryland has a growing uh, Muslim population. Um, and Oklahoma does as well, you'd be surprised. Um, but so my guess is that that's gonna kind of continue uh, to change uh, in a few places. And this also is 2011, so it might be uh, a little bit different um, at this time. But that gives you an idea. And some of the largest concentrations that you have are, for example, in Houston, uh, Texas, a uh, product of uh, the oil industry in a lot of ways that people came over and then you ended up having a lot of Muslims um, who gathered and... What is that percentage for the green states? Oh, it's different from each one. It's just that it's... it's yeah, it's, it's different for each one and I, and I couldn't say per state, but it's just that it is the second largest... Uh, it, is this, it is the largest non-Christian group okay. in there. Yeah, that says Islam. Okay. okay. The red is Hinduism. The pink is Judaism. The yellow is Buddhism. The pink is Judaism. Yeah. I, and like I said, I don't know why somebody chose pink for Judaism. <laughs> yes. I have a question, just a comment. But it's hard not to notice that that's all, where the Muslims are. The uh, the largest group is also where the GOP has its yeah. Uh, base. Yeah, I know. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what uh, mm -hmm. what the result is that. But here's the other thing, though, is that. Remember, um, Muslims as a group, for example, they, um, there was a period of time when Muslims said we should vote for the GOP because they are more socially conservative. As actually, uh, it'll come up in a, in a little bit, there's actually somebody who did a study who said that Muslims voting as a block in the 2000 election is what swung Florida for George Bush. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, lots, lots of things. Can you talk more about that, because has it changed? It has changed. It actually changed, it changed by 2004, uh, by that election. I mean, it was, it, Muslims basically said that it was kind of a, uh, uh, I think Muslim, some Muslims now think of that as a, uh, a narrowly conceptualized vote, that they, sh they should have been thinking more about the broader geopolitical implications rather than just the, uh, the American uh, social conservative aspects. Because, you know, Muslims in general, they're not, uh, they're not as anti-abortion as evangelicals, but they don't like the idea of uh, people being able to go freely uh, just get abortions. But Islam is much more pro-abortion than many people think. Or not pro-abortion, but allows abortion. Um, so, but it's, you know, these kind of aspects of conservative values. Um, and it really was, was a wash. They didn't get any of the conservative values that they were really um, uh, hoping for, and, uh, and they ended up with um, massive destruction in the Middle East. All right. Now, according to Pew survey of 2015, there are 3.3 million Muslims in the United States. Um, there are other people who say, looking at the footnotes, that it should be more around 4.5 five to five million. Um, there is a, uh, a, a study supported by uh, CARE, it was Ihsan Baghdi, I think, who did it. Uh, it says that there are uh, 10 million. There are some scholars who say the number is eight million. Um, and this, I think, is instructive that Paul Findlay, in this book, Silent No More, that studied the 2000 election, said that 3.2 million Muslims voted in the 2000 presidential election. Um, if he's accurate, then I think we'd probably be talking about somewhere between 3.5 to 5 million uh, in the United States uh, of America. 
Now, one of the things to keep in mind here, remember when we were talking yesterday about the Alevis in Turkey, that when the Alevis in Turkey want to talk about their numbers, that if you ask the Alevis, they're somewhere between 20 to 25 percent of the, uh, or sorry, 20 to 25 million, which would be almost one third of, uh, of Turkey. But if you go and you look at people who have studied it, you get a much lower number. The same when you go to the Coptic community in, uh, in Egypt, and they're probably about seven, maybe 10% at most, but you'll get people saying 10 to 15% or more. Um, minority communities, when they do these statistics themselves, they, tend, they have a tendency to want to throw in uh, other people um, and want to inflate the numbers and use the most generous estimates that they can at particular times. So I don't trust, personally, the 10 million uh, number. Um, and, uh, and I would say it's closer to the Pew survey number, but that it's probably a little bit more. And there are people who will differ with me in that. I just don't, I don't know. The numbers are kind of all over the place. Any questions right now? No. All right. Here are the demographics of Muslims in the United States. Those who are born in the U.S., and this, uh, and this includes the children of immigrants, and this includes converts like me. Um, so those who are born in the U.S. make close to 30%. Immigrants from Africa, 9%. From Europe, 6% from Iran, 4%, um, and that's mostly since 1979. Immigrants from Pakistan or South Asia are uh, 20%, and then immigrants from the Middle East and North Africa, 32% of the Muslim American population. So really, overall, Muslims actually come from 60 different countries uh, in the United States of America. More than 60 different countries. All right, so of the Muslims in America, and you could say, and this again, these numbers are, are, I think that these numbers are very difficult to calculate because when you come to, like for example, the black Muslims, you know, there are a lot of people who are black Muslims in the United States that are just like you know, people who will say that they're a, a recovering Catholic. That they were baptized, but they don't go anymore. They don't really personally identify with it uh, anymore. Um, but they'll say, if you press them, say, yeah, I'm Catholic. Okay. So you have some people like that. So these, the, the, Muslim, the, the numbers might be larger um, within that. Um, so but anyways, of the black Muslims, 80% are born into Islam now and 20% uh, convert uh, into Islam. Um, South Asian is the largest population, about 34% when you bring together the immigrants and the second and third generations. Arab and, uh, and North Africa, 26%. And then the other, you have 15%. White converts, Eastern European, Cambodian, Burmese, Chinese, uh, from the Caribbean as well, all right? And this, again, this is according to, uh, this is according to Pew. Um, I threw in the white convert part in there for the other 15% because I'm a white convert, so I figured I had to be somewhere in there. <laughs> all right. All right, now, origins by generation, all right? People who are first generation American, okay? This is very important. This means first generation Amer in America, 63%, all right? Second generation in America, 15%. Third plus generation, 22%. The reason that this number is higher than this number is because this would include people like me. I'm a, like, uh, I, mean, I was, my family was here before the Revolutionary War. Um, and so, but I would count in this area. So many white converts and many black converts count in this area as the third generation plus. And so here you would have the people who are the children of, uh, of immigrants uh, for the most part. Now, of the demographic, demographic breakdown, we now have a situation where there are more Muslims who are born in the US uh, than, are, than are immigrants. And that is something relatively new in the last 15 years or so. Um, and so this sh shows a change, and it's, that's a, a fundamentally important change for the development of institutions. Uh, Muslims are just starting, really, to get kind of institutionally savvy. Um, and uh, they're really, I would say, t to some degree behind the ball on that. And because really, when you talk to a lot of, of, of immigrants, and my apologies to some who are immigrants here, but there were a lot of immigrants who came over here with the idea that we'd go back home eventually. And we'd make money, we'd be here for a while, but we're gonna retire, we're gonna go back home. 
And so, and so when they're conceptualizing Islam in that way, also a lot of them were sending money back home rather than investing money in institution building in the United States of America. Now a lot of Muslims are thinking very differently about that. They're thinking, well, we really actually need to be using our resources to be developing institutions within the United States of America. And this is, this is bringing about a lot of significant changes within the Muslim community today. Now, so then those who are born in the, in the, uh, the Middle East are North Africa, 26%. Those born in Pakistan, 9%. Uh, other South Asian countries, uh, 7%, and then Iran, Iraq, Bangladesh, Yemen, all these countries are about 3% uh, each. Um, so this kind of makes up the, the overall uh, composition. And again, a lot of these numbers are difficult uh, to necessarily uh, track down because, like I said before, sometimes people have a tendency to start throwing all of the Arab Christians in with uh, the Muslims. Um, that, that's one thing.